Alright, so this is to make constitution chapter two citizenship. Alright, so this is on the acquisition of Jamaican citizenship. Point one a person may, in accordance with the provision of this chapter, become a Jamaican citizen by a birth. B, descent or requirements of naturalization. That means, naturalization means you actually live in Jamaica and you adopt, you adopt the Jamaican ways, basically, so you, you become a Jamaican, basically, because you live here. And C, reg registration as a citizen of Jamaica based on marriage to a citizen of Jamaica. This also requires naturalization. So both descent and true marriage requires naturalization, basically. Two, by act of parliament, parliament may make position, provisions for the acquisition of citizenship of Jamaican by a person who did not become a citizen by virtue of this chapter. So basically, by act of parliament, so, so for emergency person, um, reasons are something like a person needs to become a citizenship, for example, say represent Jamaica probably in sport, right? And they have not fully become naturalized, though they are of Jamaican descent. This act of parliament may garner them a citizen, or maybe a person that's an ambassador or something, for whatever reason, an act of parliament can grant that person grant that person citizenship okay a person is entitled to citizenship on the 1st of march 1993 that's what when this came out this amendment came on a a person who was born out of jamaica before the 6th of august 1962 which again is independence day Jamaican Independence Day, when Jamaica got independent from Britain. So that date will come up a lot. 6th of August, 6th day of August, 1962. B, who was not before the 1st of March, 1993, entitled to Jamaican citizenship by any virtue of this constitution before that date. C, whose mother or father on the 6th day of August became or would, but for his death, have became a citizen of Jamaica in accordance with. Okay, so you're you are a Jamaican citizen by descent, even if your parent was a Jamaican citizen before Jamaica actually became a country, but they were living in the former colony colony so for example said some say somebody mother passed away 1960 and they they weren't a citizen of jamaican but they they were registered they were registered in census they can still claim citizenship as of 1993 this came in place which makes sense it's quite practical because what does it matter two shall not affect the rights of any person before the 1st of March, 1993, entitled to Jamaican citizenship by virtue of any, any provision of this constitution before, which was enforced that date. So these new amendments would not affect anyone who was entitled to citizenship before this amendment. So, 
have been born before 1993, these amendments wouldn't affect them if they were otherwise, they would otherwise be able to claim Jamaican citizenship having born before this date, March 1st, 93. 3B. Every person born in Jamaica shall become a citizen of Jamaica. On the sixth day of August 1963, in the case of a person born before that date. B. On the date of his birth, in the case of a person born on or after 1962. So if you're born before 1962, you're a citizenship. If you're born on the day, or after the day of the two, you're still a citizenship as long as you're born in Jamaica. Two, a person shall be, be deemed to be born in Jamaica if he was born on a ship or aircraft, registered in Jamaica or belonging to the Jamaican government, or if at the time of his birth, his mother, is a citizen residing in a country other than Jamaica by reason of her employment in diplomatic service. Whether or not a citizen, this is the second point, whether or not a citizen of Jamaica is residing in a country other than Jamaica by reason of her being married to a citizen of Jamaica who is residing in that country by reason of his employment in a Diplomatic service of Jamaica. They will be granted citizenship of Jamaica as well. Three, a person shall not become citizen of Jamaica by virtue of this section if at the time of his birth, his mother or father possesses such immunity from suit or legal process according to an envoy of a foreign sovereign power accredited so, Her Majesty, in right of government, and neither of his parents is a citizen of Jamaica. So, all right, if the Crown of England, basically, the Crown of England grants someone diplomatic citizenship of Jamaica, their children, for example, if they're British, their children would not be given Jamaican citizenship because they aren't diplomats and they don't have any biological ties to Jamaica, so they will be British and they wouldn't be dual citizens. Dual citizens. They will just be British or Canadian or whatever country their parents were born in because their parents weren't citizens of Jamaica save for their diplomatic ties. That's what this segment is saying. B. His mother or father is an enemy, alien, and birth occurs in a place under occupation by the enemy. All right. So this is saying, right, if Jamaica and an enemy is at war, right, and uh, the example, Jamaica is at war with say Haiti and um Haitians occupy Jamaica and the children were born here in Jamaica to Haitian parents right the child wouldn't be granted a uh, Jamaican citizen they would not be seen as a Jamaican citizen because that is as a result of a person being an enemy. And it doesn't have to be a war, it could be just not having good diplomatic relations because it's because it says an alien enemy. And it went on to say when the place is under occupation by the enemy as well. So it's like they're invaders. So like the Brit the British or anyone coming to invade Jamaica and their offspring is born here, they wouldn't be considered Jamaican. All right. Next section, 3C, citizenship by descent. Every person born outside of Jamaica shall become a citizen of Jamaica if A, on the 6th of August 1962, in the case 
of a person born before that date are on it. Two, if on that day his father or mother is a citizen of Jamaica by birth or descent or registration by virtue of marriage of citizens of Jamaica. So it's if their parents are born on that day or if this person was born uh, in Jamaica before or on 92. Four. Four. Persons entitled to be registered as Jamaican citizens. One. Any man or woman who on the 5th of August 92 had been married to a person, A, who becomes a citizen of Jamaica by virtue of Section 3 of this constitution, R, B, having died before that day would, but for that person that would have become a citizen of Jamaica by virtue of this section, shall be entitled up on making application in such manner as may be prescribed and if he or she had been naturalized in the former colony of Jamaica as a British subject before the act came into force or. So this is saying that, right? If Two persons are married before 1962, right? And the, not the, the Jamaican died. The widow or widower shall be granted Jamaican citizenship if they applied and if they were actually citizens of the Commonwealth already. So somebody from um, Japan probably wouldn't get, be granted citizenship when somebody from Canada, which is a part of Canada, will be granted Jamaican citizenship if they so desire, right? All right. Two, a person who on the fifth day of August 1962 is a citizen of the United Kingdom and her colonies. So basically, if a person is a part of the Commonwealth, the United Kingdom and its colonies, they can apply for citizens having become a citizen under the British Nationality Act. So basically what it's saying that is British citizens, citizens that were colonies of the British Empire had right to apply for citizenship in Jamaica, having lived here, right? Basically, having become a citizen by virtue of having been naturalized or registered in a former colony of Jamaica under that act. Any man so even if they got married by naturalization they're still able to the spouse or widow is still able to claim citizenship or if the person is naturalized and the husband is a naturalized Jamaican the spouse of a naturalized Jamaican is still also able to claim citizenship under this section number seven, marriage to citizen of Jamaica. Any man or woman who after the fifth day of August 1962 marries a person who is or became a citizen of Jamaica shall subject to section two be entitled up on making application in such manner be prescribed as if she or he is a British protected person or an alien upon taking oath of allegiance, be registered as a citizen of Jamaica. Two, person may be denied registration under this section if there a there is satisfactory evidence that the marriage entered into is primarily for the purpose of enabling that person to acquire Jamaican citizenship. So basically, what he's saying is that. Business marriages are not allowed, basically. And we know a lot of this stuff goes on even... This stuff goes on even with Jamaicans, it is said, go overseas and get married for just the, just the purposes of um, acquiring a green card and um, US citizenship. 
So it is said that that's what is said. Now. They could have gotten married for other reasons as well. Right. And if the married, if the parties of the marriage have no intention to live permanently with each other as spouse after the marriage, so you have to. It's basically saying to become a Jamaican citizen by virtue of marriage, the marriage has to be um, consummated and it has to be a, a true marriage in the traditional sense, as um, outlined by the church, basically, right? And the person having been convicted in any country of a criminal if, uh, offense specified in any law which make provision for such denial on grounds of conviction. So, persons that criminal record that are ex-convicts could be denied Jamaican citizenship even if they are married to a Jamaican having their right being stripped for this reason. Three, shall not affect any shall not affect the right of any person born before the twenty sixth of March nineteen ninety nine was entitled to apply for Jamaican citizenship by any virtue of provision. So this came into place. The, the previous section came into place in 1999 and those before would not really be affected by this right so next point is eight deprivation of citizenship no person who is a citizen of jamaica by virtue of six and three one a b r c shall be deprived of his or her citizenship Right? So, if you're a citizen of Jamaica, by virtue of Section 3, we cannot be this denied citizenship. It's unconstitutional. So, we forever be citizens of this land. A person specified grounds on which deprivation may take place. The procedure, the procedure for such deprivation and be securing any person affected thereby a right to access the Supreme Court for the purposes of reviewing the decision to deprive his or her right to citizenship. Right, so basically, this is just protecting our fundamental rights of our citizenship. And when you're a citizen, you have other rights within this constitution attached to that. If you're not a citizen, you don't have all those rights of a citizen while you're in Jamaica. Now, Commonwealth citizens, every person who is under the constitution or any act of parliament is a citizen of Jamaica under any enactment for the time being enforced in any country in which this section applies is a citizen of that country and by virtue of that citizenship has the status of a commonwealth citizen. So basically, we are all members of what they call the Commonwealth. So basically what this is saying that whilst traveling to a member of the Commonwealth realm, we shall be granted all the rights of a person in said realm. Example, in Canada, Commonwealth realm, I should be treated as a Canadian citizen or at least member a Commonwealth citizen, basically, which is equivalent to a Canadian citizen. So I should be granted all those rights. If I'm in the UK, if I'm in Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand, um, most of the former English colonies are part of the Commonwealth. So we should be granted those same rights and privileges. So two, every person who is a British subject without citizenship under British Nationality Act of 1948 who continues to be a British subject under Section 2 of that Act shall be virtue by this status, have the status of a Commonwealth citizen. So it's saying all subjects of Britain have 
status of a commonwealth citizen basically that's what it's saying three serve as may be otherwise provided by parliament the country to which this section applies the united kingdom colonies as i said canada australia new zealand india pakistan Ceylon, which is sri lanka ghana the federation of malaysia nigeria cyprus sarah leone tanganyika hmm. not sure if that's tanzania but it's a tanganyika the federation of rhodesia that's um zimbabwe why they don't why they don't um amend these things so that we understand like the mother name because i say federation of rhodesia tanganyika and Nyasland, right so this is probably zimbabwe and um zambia because I'm, I'm, I know that Rhodesia is uh, Zimbabwe and um, what's the other one? Nazanlan is probably Zambia. Not sure about that one though. And it says the state of Singapore. So it says all these countries, right? Upon arrival to these countries, you should be granted um, all the rights of a Commonwealth citizen. Basically, that's what it's saying. So, Moving on, number 10, criminal liability of Commonwealth citizen. A Commonwealth citizen who is not a citizen of Jamaica or a citizen of the Republic of Ireland who is not a citizen of Jamaica shall be guilty of any offense against any law enforced in Jamaica by reason of anything done or omitted in any part of the Commonwealth other than Jamaica or Republic of Ireland in any foreign country, unless the act or omission would be an offense if he were an alien. So it basically saying Jamaicans and the Irish are exempted from these laws upon arrival to other countries, unless these laws also affect aliens that are not members of the Commonwealth. I'm not sure why the Irish and the Jamaicans are viewed differently, but that's the class. B, in the case of an accord mission of any part of the, of the Commonwealth or Republic of Ireland, it would be an offense if that country in which the act was done, the omission were made a foreign country. So they will be viewed as a foreign country then, basically of the virtue of coming from Ireland, but all the other Commonwealth countries would be seen. So probably Ireland of part as part membership of the Commonwealth. But all the other countries would be seen um basically under the laws of Commonwealth and be prosecuted as such. Basically that's what that's saying there. Eleven parliamentary powers are this is powers of parliament, right? interpretation this oh so it is just a preface for the next chapter and we'll cover that in the next video excellence nobody influence youngsters stop your nonsense whether a gangster or a prankster or a mobster or a monster Me say crime is not the answer Black power you be fight for Gangster or a prankster or a mobster or a monster Me say crime is not the answer Black power you be fight for People be on each, gangster be banished Guns them we banish, crime will demand the situation Crenade, don't be astonished Robbing and ripping it, the people in a panic Protecting the oppressors, that is so ironic Captain D Manic, too satanic, not thinking like a man acting automatic. You're planning the plan, so don't be idiotic. Gangster or a prankster, or a mobster, or a monster. Me say crime is not the answer. Black power you be fight for. Gangster or a prankster, or a mobster, or a monster. Me say crime is not the answer. Black power you be fight for. Any revolutionary freedom fighter. Who have a cause, believe or die for. Fight to liberate black sons and 
daughter Fire bun for the tea for rum and slaughter Fire bun the bully, bun the extarter Now fight for unity, now nah, black power Dirty slave master, now get slaughter Stop and harass the bully Gwigla Gangsta